End Boulevard, Suite 100, St. Louis Park, Minnesota, 55416. Our office hours are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our morning announcements. Amen. Are you ready to receive the word? Y'all ready? Come on, y'all know what to do. Stand on your feet. Come on, we show honor in this house. Stand on your feet. Let's thank God for the gift of God that he's given us in our apostle, Apostle Joshua Giles. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. give the Lord a praise all over the room. Come on, why don't we bless the Lord all over the room? Amen. There is a word for the house. I'm excited uh, today to be sharing this word uh, with you. Uh, I want us to go very quickly to 3 John uh, chapter 2, chapter 1 and verse 2. It says this, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when your brothers came and testified of the truth that is in you. Look at somebody and say, there's truth in you. And he says, just as you walk in the truth, he says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers and who have borne witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. Father, we thank you for your word. We're so ready and hungry to receive from you. Father, we thank you that you're removing every demonic force that would try to sit on this atmosphere, every demonic spirit that would try to sit upon the minds and hearts of your people. Father, I thank you that it's broken now by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that as this word comes forth, that it comes forth and makes impact. Father, let healing take place, let deliverance manifest, and we give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. We have been in a series on uh, dealing with getting us ready. Thank you, musicians. We'll come back for you in just a little bit. We've been dealing with the series, getting you ready for the blessing of God that's about to come into your life. Now, I'm going to keep saying this over and over again because I just believe that we have entered into a season where the blessing of the Lord is not just going to come in your hands, it's going to overtake you. And I need you to hear this until it gets in your spirit that the blessing of God will overtake me. And so in order for us to get prepared for that, we have to deal with areas of the soul. Bishop came, released a prophetic word that the Lord was bringing us into seven years of plenty. Now, can you imagine year after year increasing exponentially? I need you to just sit back and imagine that for a moment, that by the time we cross from December 31st, into January 1st, you will have stepped over into your first level of increase. This means that wherever you've been uh, in your soul, emotionally, in your mind, financially, in your family life, you're getting ready to see the Lord increase and expand that, which means that we got two months uh, for God to see the hand of the Lord move to get us ready for breakthrough that's coming. 
2025, this is my decree over your life and over my life, that 2025 is going to be the year of unusual increase. You're going to see increase on every side. It's going to be the blessing of the Lord that just don't make sense. When God blesses you, he can release a blessing in a way that it catches you so off guard it just don't even make sense. This means you weren't even searching for it, and God's just going to give you the thing that you didn't even desire, but it became your desire. You ever been blessed like that before where God gave you something you weren't even asking for, but it was so good you thought, God, you knew exactly what I needed. I didn't even know I wanted it, but thank God for the blessing. That's the way he's about to bless you. But your soul has to get ready to handle the blessing. And so I want to teach uh, this message today entitled Prospering in Your Soul. It's time for your soul to prosper. This was the prayer uh, that was there in 3 John where we see uh, this, uh, this famous passage that we say over and over again. He's saying this as a prayer. He says, I pray that you may prosper in all things, including in your health, just as your soul prospers. So this means that your prosperity, the word prosper in the Hebrew language means to move forward. So it doesn't just deal with what we think about prosperity as, meaning money or material things, but to prosper means that every time the enemy tries to hold you uh, in a place to make you stuck, somehow you end up moving forward. When life happened and things occurred and you went through breakdown periods in your life uh, where you should have been stuck, you should have been in a place where you couldn't move, but somehow the prosperity of God comes on you and he gets you out of the snare and you can just move forward. Have you ever looked back in your life over situations where you said, I know that should have got me. That situation should have threw my life off for at least a year, two years, but somehow you were able to push past it like it never even happened. If you only knew what I was going through in January of 2024, but right now it's like it never even, like it never happened because it's prosperity on you. God had placed prosperity on me for many years and I didn't know it. I, I didn't have the money or the accounts to show it because I thought prosperity was money. I had no idea it was God's anointing on your life that just keeps pushing you when you feel like you're stuck. Tell somebody you're about to move forward. They didn't believe it. Find the other person on the other side of you, in front of you, or behind you. And prophesy to them and tell them you're about to move. You're about to move. You're about to move forward because it's the assignment of God for you. And so the way that we've got to deal with this in order to properly receive the prosperity is going to require a soul renovation. It's going to require a soul renovation. I want to give you very quickly these principles of the soul. So your soul is defined as uh, your will. It's defined as not only your will, but it is your mind. There are different sides to your soul. It's a complex thing that God created. It's also defined as your reasoning, your ability to think and to process. Uh, it's also defined as your emotions. And it sits literally on a foundation called your imagination. Everybody say, my imagination. The enemy wants to hijack your imagination to try to get you to a point where you stop planning for the future. You stop dreaming and envisioning. You stop imagining what God can do. And so he tries to compromise your imagination. He will compromise your imagination in many different ways. He will try to come in with another version or picture of your life to make you think you're always going to be stuck. If you notice when the enemy comes at you, he comes at you with a picture showing you worse than where you are. And the, the sound bite of the enemy becomes, what if I never get out of this? What if this never happens? So the enemy's always going to speak to your mind in terms of you not moving forward. But when God speaks to you, he speaks to a future that you've never even stepped into yet, but it will happen. 
And so your imagination is going to be key. The enemy tries to give you a picture. Uh, many times he fights against us with pictures. He's constantly trying to put a different imagination in front of you. Uh, this is why pornography is one of the biggest battles that not only people in the world, but believers are wrestling with and fighting against. And I know it's one of those topics that we don't really talk about in church because who wants to have that conversation? And so when we start talking about it, everybody kind of drops their head. People are like, don't make eye contact. Do not make. <laughs> but we're going to have to deal with this because the enemy's trying to show you another picture. He's trying to get something else in your mind to pull your soul in a different direction. Because whatever you see in front of you is the direction you begin to move towards. And he knows that if God puts a picture in front of you, you will start moving in that direction. And so you're going to have to take your image nation back, your imagination. It is a series of images that the Lord placed within your spirit before you ever got here. Before he formed you in your mother's womb, he placed pictures of your purpose in your mind. And the enemy's been trying to drown out that purpose. But what we're about to do today is we're about to take our minds back. We're about to take our emotion back. We're about to take our reasoning back. We're about to take our imagination back. Come on, we're taking our souls back. Now, I want to give you these principles very quickly. These are principles of the soul. Number one, the soul was created by God as the most valuable part of a person. Your soul is the most valuable part of you. Do you know this? The Bible says it this way. He placed this treasure in earthen vessels. What is the treasure? The treasure is your soul. This is why Jesus is admonishing uh, in the New Testament. He said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world, but then to lose your soul? This gives us the perspective that your soul can be lost. Not just in eternity, your soul can be lost here on the earth. You could be walking around and you lost possession of your soul. That's a very dangerous thing if you're walking around and you lost possession of your soul. And so you must understand how valuable it is. And if you knew how valuable your soul was, you wouldn't just let any and everybody get close to it. If you knew how valuable it was, it's worth more uh, than the assets that you have. It's worth more than the diamond that's on your hand. It's worth more than the house that you own. Your soul cannot be calculated in natural dollars. That's how expensive it is. And if you knew how valuable it was, you would guard your soul. We've got to learn how to guard our soul because it's the most valuable possession that we have. When you lose everything in your life, make sure you never lose your soul. Number two, we're dealing with principles of the soul. Uh, your environment begins to shape your, or your environment and your experiences begin to shape your soul. Your environment, the things that you have experienced throughout your life, they shape the condition of your soul. And so your soul is a direct reflection of how you grew up. And so if you have a person uh, if, if you've come to my house, I understand that my, me as a person, there are certain things that I want and certain things that I have. Uh, I have to stop myself from buying shoes. It's because I grew up with like one or two pair of shoes. And so you'll come to my house and just see 50 pair of shoes that I've never worn yet. Can I be honest about myself? I'll talk about me so you won't say I'm talking about you. And people come over, they're like, when are you going to wear these? I don't know. <laughs> well, Why did you get them? I just wanted them. <laughs> because your soul is a direct reflection of how you were brought up. And so if you were brought up in a place of poverty, it's very uh, likely that you're going to begin to go after the thing that you didn't have. Uh, your soul begins to thirst after what it feels that it did not get. And so many people are going throughout their adult life not really understanding their purpose, not really knowing who they are. They're simply chasing what their soul feels it did not get in the past. And so whether you know it or not, your soul is so important that it's like a container. You're literally walking around with this container everywhere you go. And your soul is, number three, the receiving part of you. Everybody say, my soul is the receiving part of me. 
So you get to either have your soul be a bank or uh, be a market for investments or a trash can for filth. So either my soul is going to be something that I invest in or it's going to be a place that uh, collects a whole lot of stuff. Your soul is, again, the most powerful part of you is so important that every experience that you've ever had has been collected in your soul. Even the parts that you can't even remember because there are several parts of your mind. There is your conscious mind, which is the part that you know. It's the things that you remember on a regular basis. But then there is your subconscious mind. That's the part of you where your habits go into. It's the reason why you were driving home for an hour and you just blanked out while you were driving. You don't even remember how you got home, but you got there. And you're like, am I here this quick? I don't even remember moving uh, on the highway like that, driving 90. I was driving with uh, someone and I was going 90, but I was thinking. I'm just telling myself, you know, you, you start thinking, and I don't know what my foot is doing with the gas. My, my foot is going to go into a default, which is to go very quickly. I'm used to driving fast. I try not to scare people if they ride with me, but I do give them a disclaimer. And I don't talk about it much because the protection of the Lord has been there. I've never gotten a speeding ticket in my life, and I try not to speed, but he's still working on me. But... What is that part of you that kicks in when you're driving and you just didn't even remember how you made the turn and you went there and you're like, I'm here? That's your subconscious mind. That's where your habits go into. And your habits dictate your life. That's the part of your mind that you can't see, the part of your mind that you don't even realize is there. And then there's something even deeper than that, your unconscious mind. That's where you are... Uh, maybe 40 years old and you s have a smell that comes in your environment and it brings up a memory from when you were three years old. And you say, I don't know where that memory came from. I don't, I never remembered this before. Where was it? It was in your unconscious mind the whole time. It was buried in your soul. That's where it is. Every experience that you've ever gone through is in your soul. And over time, we end up collecting uh, trash in the soul. Dream, come hold this for me. We end up collecting trash in our souls. And so I want to go through this for a moment because it's important for us to see these principles, and I'm going to get to this in just a moment. But let me give you number four. So the soul is the filter for how you see life. Your processing or your sight is filtered through your soul. And so if you've been in a situation where uh, you have been hurt, if you've been in a situation where things have happened in your life and it's not easy, you've been hurt, you've gone through some things, it, it becomes, uh, it starts to affect your eyesight. It starts to affect the way you see a thing. And so everything that that person sees, it has offense and hurt connected to it. And so then we become ministers and we become preachers and we're still seeing through that same slant of hurt. And then God calls you as a prophet and every word you give is a rebuke to a person. So then you're seeing out of the filter of your soul because your soul acts as uh, this intermediary. And we'll sit this here for a second, Dream. Your soul acts as this intermediary between, and you can wait there for me, between your spirit or between your physical body and your spirit. And so your soul is the connection between your physical body and your spirit. Whenever God gets ready to speak something into your life, he will then begin to speak it, but it has to filter into the soul of a person through your mind, through your intellect, through your reasoning. And this is why we can be hearing the word of God, but by the time we've left church, we've changed up everything that the preacher has said. You ever been in a church service and y'all all heard the same word? And the person that left said, oh my God, he told me I got to leave my career and go into something else. And you're looking at them like, what? Because by the time the word came to them and filtered through their soul, it had to deal with issues first. So the first thing God is trying to do before he can then uh, fill us up, before he can activate us and give, place an anointing on us, is he's got to deal with the stuff that we got in our soul. Now, uh, uh, just Sherry, just come here for a moment because you're going to help me clean out the soul for a second. So I want you to just pick whatever uh, in this uh, soul uh, basket here. You just pick one of them out, and you're going to help. Just open that up, and let's see what's what's in that show everybody so 
your soul went through some stuff in the past. And we're carrying it around, but we can't see it. And so because we can't see it, we think it's not there anymore. Because we become numb, we think we're healed. But numb means you felt the pain of it so much that your body shut down to the feeling of it, but it's still there. And so I'm just hold that up again. So, so I'm dealing with anger and I don't know it. Because now it's laced in my personality. And I just tell people, well, I'm direct. Oh, I'm going to lose some of y'all. Let's preach on me. Let me preach on me. And so I make excuses for what's been hidden and buried in my soul. Because now what happens is it's been hidden there so long that Sherry is now intertwined with my personality. And so our greatest enemy is not demon spirits, even though they exist. Our greatest enemy is those things that have become intertwined with our personality that has created a false personality, which is a false expression of who we are. And so whenever I have anger like this, and you know when you have anger because you got a short fuse at times. You can go from zero to ten for no reason. How many of y'all been fasting with us? Okay, look at the hand. Somebody's hand went like this. <laughs> your, hand, your hand didn't even do that. You went. Put your hand down. But if you fast, you know, somebody told me the other day that I was, you know, are you okay? And I was like, I'm fine. They said, well what's, well, what's wrong with you? I said, oh, I'm fasting. I forgot. That's what it is. I said, because when you start fasting and you fast for real, you deny your flesh. Your flesh start acting. Y'all know what I'm talking about you? I mean, irritated. I mean, just irritable. Don't talk to me. Give me 10 feet of personal space. And so my, your, your flesh starts acting up. You start to feel it because when, when you deny your flesh, your flesh starts kicking up. It starts putting up a fight. It starts making some noise because what you're doing, according to scripture, is you're putting it to death. You're saying, I'm not going to allow you to have the thing that you want. And so fasting and prayer helps us to process through, as well as counseling, it helps us to process through anger. I need another volunteer real quick to just run up here on stage. Let me see your hand first. I don't want you to scare me. Uh, come up here. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. I don't want anybody, everybody just run up on stage. I don't know. Security might come out. So just let's see what we're dealing with in here because we, we, we're processing through the soul. Just hold that up. Insecurity. So the soul because we were in environments where some person had, you know, one of the worst things is when you grew up in the same house and one person received something and, and the other person did not. One person received the type of love and the other person did not. One person got uh, some kind of experience and the other person did not. It can create a, uh, an insecurity within the soul of that person where you feel inferior or less than. No matter what room you put me in, as long as I have insecurity, I feel like I don't belong there. And so you have, you battle against this imposter uh, uh, syndrome where you feel like you have it, but I'm not. It's like I'm out of my body. I shouldn't be here. When you're feeling, when God's opened up a place for you and you feel like you shouldn't be there, like you snuck in or somebody broke you in, or, or maybe this is all going to end, it's letting you know that there is insecurity that's on the inside of you and there is a feeling of less than in you. And when you allow God to open that up to heal it, you understand understand that I'm a child of the king. This is where I belong. There are way too many believers that are dealing with inferiority. There are way too many believers that feel like I don't belong, I shouldn't have, I got this, but I know God doesn't want me to have it, and that's a lie from the enemy. And as long as the enemy can convince you that that's what you shouldn't have and where you shouldn't be, it, it creates something called a cycle. And is it possible that there is so much greatness on the inside of you? And there's so much that God placed in you. But because you don't think you're worthy of that. And you're not. It's only through Christ. 
but you don't think that you should have it, that it creates something called self-sabotage. You know, this would happen in my life over time where I would, uh, I, I, I called it the uh, spirit of almost. I said, I don't know what kind of demon this is. You know, back then, uh, we, everything was a demon. So I was calling this, this is a almost demon. Because what would happen is I would almost get the, the promotion. I would almost get the blessing. I would almost get the money, but somehow I would get up to it, and then everything would just fall through. And what I didn't realize is the next point concerning the soul is that the soul attracts what it has become. Everybody say the soul attracts what it has become. I'm going to teach this thing because you got to get this. Somebody's about to get the blessing from God, but your soul is going to hold it this time. So because... My soul thought I shouldn't have it. We grew up in a, in a good uh, family, but we were kind of poor. And so my soul thought that that's what God wanted for us. So I literally thought that I was not supposed to have possessions. I wasn't supposed to have wealth. And then you put a religious uh, system on top of that, and religion tells you, you don't need that. You don't need money like that. You don't need a house that big. You don't need to drive that. So I would go around telling people, I'll never buy a car that costs this much. I'll never do that. Why? Because I had taken some kind of vow of poverty. I'm not talking about uh, a uh, poverty in spirit. I'm talking about a mindset of poverty that caused a curse to be on me so anytime I would start to get close to the thing my soul was so powerful that it caused the self-sabotage to happen in other words because I believed it I attracted it is it possible that God is not causing the calamity in your life but just you know, walk with me on this. Is it possible that we are causing our own failure? Because our soul has not been healed, so we keep attracting the very thing that it has become? And then what happens with the soul if, you, if you're not careful? Because the soul can carry guilt and pain. So the soul will begin to punish itself. And so this is because we're dealing with guilt, we're dealing with shame, we're dealing with all of these things. And so the soul begins to attract punishment. And then religion tells you it was God who did it to you. The soul, when it is unhealed, can cause infirmity to come up in the body. So here's what the enemy does. He's the accuser of the brethren. He tempts you with the thing, has you fall into the thing. And then once you fall into the thing, he was the very one that dangled it in front of you. Then he persecutes you for falling into the thing, accuses you for doing the thing, and then causes your soul to become so impacted until it begins to affect your body. And then that same devil turns around and tells you God did this to you. See, I came to root up every lie that the enemy been telling in your mind. I came to get it today. I came to drive it out because somebody's about to get free in this room. You believe lies long enough, freedom is about to come. Your soul is about to be set free. You've been in a prison in your mind long enough, but you are about to break. I just need you to shake somebody beside you. Tell them you're getting ready to break free. Thank you. I need somebody else to run up here. You? Yeah. I just need you to pick. All right, hold that up. I got to move along. My time is about up. Let's, let's go. Oh. 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 Comparison. Comparison. All right, so I thought I dealt with the insecurity now. Now I don't feel inferior. But now I'm constantly comparing everything I got. So I just got a new car. Just drove it off the lot. Now, here come Sister Watermelon. Now she got her car. And here come Deacon Smith. Now he got his car. Now I'm looking over at Deacon Smith's car like, well, dang, I, I need a car like that. My car just doesn't, or, 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 or I'll give you one better. So, so, God gave, so God gave me a ministry, and now I'm looking at your ministry. 
and your ministry starting to break out. Well, God, what is wrong with me? Why is his ministry doing so well? And I feel like I'm in a holding pattern. Comparison is the enemy to your faith. It is an enemy of your soul because it will cause you to be captivated by somebody else's purpose when you don't know their process. Comparison is the enemy to your soul because it will cause you to be captivated by somebody else's purpose when you don't know where they are in their process. And so you might be on level two of your process, but the enemy's making you compare to their level 10 and you don't know it. And so you're sitting there discouraged and upset because now you're comparing what you have. And so God's getting ready to deal with comparison in the body. And what he's letting us know is that there is room for everybody at the table. There is nobody that's more important than anybody else. We all have an assignment. We all have a task. We all have a mandate from God. And we all must understand that there is a process that I must go through. And if I truly believe him, if I endure the process, if I will humble myself, he's going to exalt me in due time. Tell somebody, wait. See, that's a word that you don't want to hear, wait. Your word is not no, your word is not yes, your word is wait. Wait on God while you're processing through your soul and let him build what he wants to build in your life. If you would just learn how to wait. All right, I need, I need somebody else to come run up here and just uh, grab. Yep. We'll let you grab something out. We're going to do both of these. And Sheikha, you can come too. Just grab uh, one out of here. Tim, come on up. Let's, let's, let's get one out of here. So we can do these all at one time. I got to move this message along. Are you getting this word? Is it helping you? Each of you just reach in, grab one in there. Okay, we got, oh, that's a big one right there. I need time on that. What we got here? Ooh, that's a big one. I need time on that. All right, all right, all right. We, let's see how we're going to work this. All right, all right, all right, all right. So we, 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 we got fear. We got trauma. They go together. This is why they had to come up. And we also got jealousy up here. All three of them go together. And they hide out in your emotions. So your emotions is, is dealing with how you feel. The enemy tries to gain a foothold into your emotions. But then they also begin to affect your mind. If you're, in, if you're in strong fear, you can't even think straight because your mind is so under that. You can be tormented by the fear. You can be tormented in your mind by the trauma that you went through in your past. This is why you need to pay attention to your dreams. Your dreams are very important because the Bible says that we dream based on the activity of our soul. And so sometimes you're having soul dreams that tell you of hidden trauma. You ever had a dream that you were in your childhood home and you're like, what am I doing in here? And you keep having that dream over and over again. You ever had a dream that somebody was chasing you, the same person over and over again? Is it possible that that's something that happened and you're running from the trauma of what occurred? Is it possible that your soul keeps bringing you back to the house where the trauma happened? And so you keep finding yourself in this house and you're saying, but I don't see anything that's happening. It's your soul that's crying out saying, I want to get healed. And I'm trying to make you go back and work through it but you don't want to go through it and if you're going to heal the issues of the soul we're going to have to be willing to deal with the hard stuff that we don't want to deal with because it gets ugly you, you start digging through your soul and things get ugly. You start digging through your past and nobody has a beautiful past. Let's, let's be honest. Our problem is we think that some people have beautiful past and other people have ugly past. Every one of us have some ugliness that's in our past. Some things that we've gone through. Some things that we've endured. Some things that we had to deal with that maybe we don't want to think about anymore. But it's now affecting us. And so... We got to process through this because the trauma has brought in strong fear. So now, because we've gone through the issues of, of our past and we've had those experiences, we're now afraid to get close to people. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, I'm just a loner. I, I, I do good by myself. I'm just used to being alone. No, I've always been like this. So you've always been hurt? 
I want to deal with it. I want to deal with it. I want to deal with it today. Well, well, I've always, it's just the way it is. You know, I don't keep a lot of friends because you got to protect yourself, you know. So, so your trauma is now speaking through and now dictating who you connect with. And so the minute you try to get close to someone or the minute you come into relationship, you then end up experiencing triggers that bring you back to where you were. Most people in relationships are not even fighting one another. They're each fighting a version of their past experience. And so people cannot resolve the issues that they're fighting over because they're fighting about two different things. And so in marriages, in relationships, we say, well, you don't hear me. You're not understanding me. No, you both don't understand each other because you're both fighting yourself in the past. You're not even really fighting them. It's not even really an issue against them. You're fighting how you were hurt and you don't want anybody else to hurt you. You're fighting what was done to you and you don't want anybody else to do it. You're fighting the fact that you were five years old and they made you feel insignificant. And so now the very person is triggering that in you. And you never want to be the five-year-old that feels insignificant. But the Lord said the minute you let me open up your soul and begin to heal you is the very minute that you'll stop fighting your past and you'll start going after your future. I feel like somebody in this room is about to get set free and you're about to see a future that the enemy said you would never have. I came to help you fight for your future. Somebody shout I'm fighting for my future. If we gonna fight we gotta get in the trenches and we got a war. I said if we gonna fight, we gotta get in the trenches and we got a war. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I ain't done. We gonna have to get in the trenches if we gonna have the war. We gonna have to get in the trenches and we gonna have to fight for what we say. See, because there's a battle happening right now. It is not a battle over your past, it's a battle over your future. The enemy has vowed that you're going to be stuck, but God said you're about to move forward. The enemy vowed that you were going to be stuck in the breakup, the breakdown, but God said I'm giving you the breakthrough today. You're about to come forward and you're coming forward with power. This is the last day, the last minute that we're going to let the enemy steal a portion of our future from us. This is the last minute that you're going to let the enemy come in and rob you with the memory. Hold up. So you mean... You've been sabotaging my life through trauma, talking to the enemy, from a memory? A memory has been causing me to relive an experience, something that happened in one day has been affecting years of my life. Okay, this is the day that God's about to deliver you from the memory. That thing is about to let you go. The memory of how it failed, the memory of what happened, the memory of the sickness, the memory of the loss, the memory of the death, the memory of that thing is about to let you go today. You're getting ready to be healed and you're getting ready to walk in your purpose with authority. I don't know about you, but I'm never again going to be haunted by a memory of my past. One of the ways we're going to deal with it, because when we deal with all these things, I got more that I can't get to. It's all right. Because sometimes we're dealing with trauma, fear, love of money. Please, y'all sit down. Let me deal with this. Let me, let me. I'm almost done. We're dealing with all these at one time. So we didn't have. So we were in trauma. We were lacking. And so now we start chasing after things because we want God to give us things. Thank you all for being, oh, we got doubt and revenge. Oh, man, we ain't got time to deal with doubt and revenge. But, but see, through trauma, doubt slips in because your mind begins to question, how could God let me deal with this? Why would God let me go through it? And the truth is, God himself didn't do it even though you went through it. He was actually the one there with you walking through whether you felt him or not, he protected you in the midst of it, even when you felt unprotected. And so, the soul is this container that now we begin to process through the doubt that came in through trauma and fear and all of the experiences that we had. So we stopped trusting God. Now we process through the doubt. 
We begin to process through the love of money. We realize that we can't worship and serve money. We begin to process through anger and revenge and jealousy and all these different things we process through. And now comes the time for us to now, come on, be a vessel for God to use. Told this like that. James, give me some water real quick. We now have the opportunity to be a vessel for God to use. And here is God. Stay where you are. Here is God. He's saying, I'm getting ready to pour now my love into you. I'm getting ready to pour my anointing in you. I'm getting ready to pour my spirit in you. And you saying, God, I'm ready. I've cleared out everything. I'm now a vessel that I'm ready to be used. God, whatever you want to do, let it be done in my life. And so he comes and he gets ready to pour and he starts, huh? He's pouring, but it's, I can't, I can't hold it. What? He's pouring, but I'm going to help your shoes. I'm going to get you some cleaner for him. But I understand what it is to have Jordans and you need them protected. So excuse me. But just got thrown off there. I told you shoes is the problem. So. He's pouring it, and now, now, I can't hold nothing. He just released to me the blessing, but the blessing won't hold. And the Bible speaks of this very quickly. i got to read this for you in Jeremiah 2 and 13. It says, my people have committed two sins. Number one, they have forsaken me, the spring of living water. And then they have dug their own cisterns, vessels for collecting water. Broken cisterns that can hold no water. He says, so what happened is, through all of the stuff that you've gone through, you left me, you stopped seeking after me. He said, but the stuff that you collected, even though you cleared it, it damaged you. And so your vessel is clear, but it's broken. It's, it's, it's empty now. You're saying, God, why won't you, why won't you do it? Because I'm ready. Even though it's empty, it's broken from all of the stuff that you had to go through. And so God says, now what I got to do, because I keep pouring blessings down over you, but you can't hold the blessing. I keep pouring blessings into you, but for some reason it keeps falling. He puts money in your hands and you spend it. Because of the damage that was done through what you had. You endured it. You're no longer in poverty anymore, but your mind is still there. You left Egypt, but your mind is still in Egyptian bondage. You are now getting ready to enter into your promised land, but your mind is still bound by the slavery and the torture in Egypt that you went through. And so it produces in you a brokenness. And so when God gets ready to pour his oil in you, you can't hold the oil. When he gets ready to bless you, you can't hold the blessing. And the Lord says the problem is not him in the blessing. The problem is the soul has been so damaged that it keeps leaking out whatever I give it. And then we keep saying, God, I feel I feel empty. I feel so empty. I feel so broken. I feel like something's missing. And it is something missing because the soul looks like it's intact until you check out the foundation. And you find that the foundation literally has a hole that's in it. It, it can't hold anything. And so what the Lord then begins to do is he says, what I got to do is I got to set you on a firm foundation. He says, so I'm going to put you on a rock. This rock, hear me, hear me, hear me. This rock is powerful enough to fill the hole in your soul. This rock is the rock that the builders rejected, but it's this is the same rock, come on, that was a stumbling block to the enemy. But this rock is the rock of Jesus Christ. It's a solid rock. You say, God, but are you going to heal? Are you going to heal my soul? He said, let me put you on a foundation. He says, so now, when I put you, when I put you on that foundation, what I begin to do, is now begin to cause fruit to develop in you. I put it in and it holds. He says, now I begin to put in you the fruit of the Spirit. I put some love in there and it keeps holding. It didn't go nowhere. Because as long as you stay on the foundation, you can keep it. The minute you start shifting is the minute you start losing what God put in you. But you got to make sure your foundation is good. 
So he said, I'm putting love back in you. Guess what love does? Love now affects your physical, the material realm. Because now your soul is developing and it can grow. And so he puts love over here and it manifests as good relationships over here. He starts giving you some real good faith over here that starts developing and then faith begins to manifest as the business that God gave you that's about to cause your family to come out of poverty so so when he gives you one thing here if the foundation is proper then it begins to manifest in the physical realm so he says I wish above all things that you would that you would be in even as your so they're connected together. So what happens in the soul then affects in the natural. And so what we do is we're looking at the natural and we're saying, God, I don't have no money. We're saying, I don't have no friends. I don't have any relationships. And we keep going trying to fill our basket over here when God's saying, no, what you need to do is you got to start feeling this over here. Because when you feel this, I then start adding. I need you to catch that. When you feel one, he said, I start adding to the other. So let me read it to you this way. Galatians 4, and I'm closing this. Galatians 4 says it like this. It says, what I'm saying is that as long as an heir is under age, is a child. It says he is no different from a slave. As long as you, you're the heir. We said all the time, we got shirts that say I'm a king's kid. We got shirts that tell you uh, how you are connected into a royal bloodline, but you're still underage. Would you give your five-year-old child the keys to a car that he will own? Why? Because he doesn't have the maturity or the development to drive it. Now, if he was of age, would you withhold that good thing from him? So we're praying and we're asking God to give us stuff that we don't have the maturity to handle. And the only way we can handle it is if we get on the firm foundation and let him develop fruit on the inside of us. And then he begins to watch us grow. And as you grow, your growth is a trigger in the realm of the spirit. The minute you start growing is the minute the blessing is unlocked over your life. All I need you to do for the next two months is grow. I, I'm just, can I challenge you for a second? You, you don't have to, you don't have to make a thousand declarations. Can I just challenge you for a second? You don't have to go and prophesy uh, 10 different things. But if you could just grow, if you could just grow, you grow at the rate of your own desire. And when you make a decision, I'm about to grow in my soul. It releases a trigger in the heavenlies. And when God looks down and sees you have grown, when he looks down and sees your development he says they're not a child anymore I can trust them with greater I can trust you with the blessing I can trust you with the million I can trust you with the thing that you pray for tell somebody just grow just grow listen I need everybody to stand that's my time there there is a wave of healing there's a wave of healing that's about to flow through this room there is a wave of healing that's about to flow through this room. God's getting ready to heal you in one moment from the trauma that affected you over a lifetime. I just need your faith on 10 to believe. God would not speak of your trauma and your pain and not heal you. What he reveals, he heals. I need you for a moment to just begin to reach out to the Lord. Come on, begin to dig through your soul. Begin to dig through your soul. Begin to ask him, Lord, what is it that you want to, what is it that you want to bring up? And what is it that you want to deal with in me? I've been going and going. Yeah, yeah, strings for me. I've been going and going, but I'm, but God, I know I've still been, I know I've still been hurt and I've covered up the hurt. I've been moving and moving, but I'm asking you to heal me. I'm asking you to see into me. Heal my broken pieces. Heal my broken pieces. 
sing to me. Lord, I'm asking you to heal me. I'm asking you to heal me. Go into the part of me that no one sees. Just heal me. Come on, ask him. Come on, ask him. Just heal me. Jesus, we're asking you, just heal me. Holy Spirit, I know you can hear me. We're asking you, just heal me. Just heal me. Just heal me. Just give me two minutes to pray for you. Just heal. You should be reaching out to the Lord. You should be crying out to him right where you are. Just heal me. Just heal me. We need you to heal us, Lord. Just heal me. Just heal me, Lord. Just heal me. Can you pour in the oil? Heal me. Can you pour in the oil? to the broken parts of you. Just heal me. Come on, he's ministering to the fractured areas of your soul. Just heal me. Oh, 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 oh. Just, Just heal me. me. Just heal me. Just heal me. Just heal me. Just heal me. in your from childhood trauma from past experiences the Lord says this is the day that your healing takes place the Lord says this is the day that your healing takes place I need you for just 60 seconds to begin to reach out to him with everything you have come on just reach out there are several of you that have been having the dreams from your past and those dreams have been bothering you when you keep finding yourself at the same house if that's you I need you to come down to the front
going to come by and I'm going to pray for you. Take a step forward. I'm going to pour oil on you, on your head. When I pour in the oil, what I'm asking the Holy Spirit to do, we give you permission. I want everybody to say this. Holy Spirit, I give you permission to go in to every broken part of me. Even the things that I'm not aware of, bring it up to bring it out. And I receive my healing in Jesus' name. Listen, lift your hands. I'm coming quickly. As an act of faith, I'm going to pour oil on your head. Heal now. God says, I'm healing the brokenness in the soul. I'm healing the fractures. The Lord says, even in the family, what was swept under the rug. God says, even how family treated you. The Lord says, I'm going in to heal. And God says, I'm showing you your identity in me. I'm going to show you who you really are. I'm going to show you who you really are. Father, I thank you oh, for the release of your spirit now. Let healing take place. That's the anointing. Be healed in your soul. God says, I'm bringing pieces of your life back together again. God says, where you've been lied to and where people betrayed you and walked away. The Lord says, I'm going to restore you this day. I'm going to restore you this day. In Jesus' name, that's the healing balm. That's the healing power of God going into your soul. Be healed. That's it. Lose her now in Jesus' name. There it is. The rejection's coming up. Come up, come up, come up. Come up and out. Come up and out. In the name of Jesus, be healed in your soul. That's the healing power of God. That's the healing power of God. My God, that's the anointing healing you right there. Be free in the name of Jesus. Come on, release that cry. There's a cry deep within your spirit. That's it. Release that cry deep within your spirit. The cry of agony and pain. But the Lord says, I'm pouring in oil tonight. I'm pouring in oil today. I'm pouring in oil. Oh, that's the anointing coming to bring healing. God says, I'm going to bring the greatness that's in you out of you. The Lord says, there's a new confidence coming in you. There's a greater confidence because I'm going to show you who you really are. For seasons of your life, you didn't know how valuable you were because of the way people treated you. But I speak life into your soul and into your spirit. And the Lord says, there's much that I put in you. But God says, the time is coming for it to come forth fully in your life. In Jesus' name, I release that in you now. Come on, somebody pray until you see breakthrough. I need somebody that can pray in this room. Come on, pray in the spirit. God says, I'm healing. I'm healing the boy that's in the man. God says, I'm healing the boy that was fractured. And I'm going to build you into the man of God that I've called you to be. Be healed now in your soul. Be healed now in your soul. There were vows, there were demonic vows spoken in your family line that the Lord says, I'm breaking them right now in the name of Jesus. One of them was concerning wealth. And this is why you've come close. And this is why it comes into your hands. But the enemy tried to cause it to slip through. But God says after today, your soul is being healed. You won't lose what I'm putting in your spirit. Be healed. Come on, somebody release a sound in this room. Just heal me. Just heal me. Be healed this day. Just heal me. In the name of Jesus. Just heal me. Just heal me. Can you pour? That's the anointing in the room. He's pouring in oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. God says you're going to help many women. You're going to help women break free from depression. God says you're going to help women 
break free from oppression. And the Lord says, where you've had to battle through in your own life, but God says, your word is victory. I've given you the victory, and the Lord says, you're going to help them find a way out. And so I release this word of life over you in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody receive. There it is. That's the anointing. Come on, receive. I need some of my ministers to come. Come on, pray for them. Receive. God says, I'm healing. And I'm, I'm now restoring your voice. Your prophetic voice is being restored. Where the enemy tried to take your voice from you. The Lord says, this day I give it back to you. Your voice and your influence is coming back. I release that anointing there. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Healing. Healing. Be healed. Just receive by faith. Come on, receive by faith. Receive by faith. Receive by faith. Receive by faith. Heal my mind. God said, I don't care what you did. I don't care what happened in your past. The Lord says, This is your new day. I break you free from the memory of your past. I break you free from the memory of your past. It will not haunt you anymore. I break you free from it. Be restored. Be healed. Be healed. Come on, Michelle. Put your hand. what I'm doing is I'm healing the little girl the little girl that the enemy tried to abuse God said I'm healing God said I'm uprooting the abuse that I just need somebody that can pray in the spirit there's a healing taking place right now God says, I go back to when you were three years old, four years old, five years old. God says, even six years old. And the Lord says, even those within the family that didn't want to believe you, what you went through. God says, I just healed you this day from it. The Lord says, forgive them and release it. 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 My God, that's the anointing in the room. There's some of you standing there. The Lord says, forgive the person that hurt you. And as you forgive, there's a healing coming over you. Right there in the white. Somebody, somebody get her. Come on, bring her real quick. family, she's families that her mom or healing that's happening today there's a family healing and the Lord says when I heal today this family unit is going to be strengthened more now than ever but God says you went through a great trauma in the family where it the enemy tried to cause it to break your family unit and this was so tough because the loss was so great. But the Lord says, I'm restoring your whole family this day. My 
God, I feel the anointing right there. God says I'm restoring. I want to speak to mom for a moment. Mom, I hear the Lord saying that because of your prayers, I'm restoring the family unit. The Lord says because of your prayers, I'm healing the rift and the hole that was in the family. And the Lord says to tell you it wasn't your fault. God says the things that occurred, you, you did everything you could to hold them together. And the Lord says you, you worked hard to hold them together, but things begin to fracture and break. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, I'm healing your family now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in your soul. God says, I'm going into the intricate parts of your soul, the area that you don't tell anybody about it. God says, I'm healing you now, and you're getting ready to come forth stronger than ever. You're going to come forth with more power than what you had. I decree healing in the name of Jesus. I need somebody to release a shout of victory. I said, release a shout. That's the anointing over you there. I decree the release of the oil. This family, I've got to make some declarations. Just join hands as a family. While I make these declarations over them, I'm making them over you. The Lord says, this is the era of wholeness for your family. You will see family restoration. God says, you will see every promise that I gave you fulfilled. The Lord says, there is a barrier that's breaking right now. And God says, I undo what the enemy meant for harm in your life. And I'm turning it now for your good. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, generational wealth will begin to flow through this family. And the Lord says, generational ministry will begin to flow through this family. But God says, I'll take your pain and turn it into ministry. I'll take the hardship and turn it into ministry. And the Lord says, out of you will come writings. And out of you will come testimonies. And the Lord says, there's a refreshing wind that's blowing over your whole house. Receive the wind of God this day in the name of Jesus. I need somebody to receive it for your family. I said, somebody receive it for your own family. Can you just give God a shout in the room? Receive in faith. Receive in faith. Listen, as I'm praying for you. It's breaking, it's breaking, it's breaking, it's breaking. God's word has already come over you. Receive it in faith that this is a new day for your life. This is a new day for your family. Receive it in faith that God's already done the thing that he promised you. You will no longer be stuck, says the Lord. God says, I'm bringing you out and I'm bringing you forward today. I'm bringing you forward today. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm bringing you forward. I'm bringing you forward this day. The Lord says, there are things that you've spoken out of your own mouth that the Lord says, I'm getting ready to undo. God says, some of those words were like vows spoken against your future. Where you said, I, I don't want to do this. Or you said, well, God, if I can't have this, then I'm not going to do that. But the Lord says, I'm undoing those words and I'm speaking a new word over you. God says, the word over your life is blessed. The word over your life is expand. The word over your life is grow. The word over your life, the Lord says, is peace. The word over your life is fulfillment. The word over your life is purpose. God said, I will fill every void, every broken area in your soul I'm feeling. Just lift your hands, Tati. There's an anointing coming on you. God said, I'm feeling the voids. I'm feeling the brokenness. I'm feeling them now. God says, you search for things saying, God will I just, there, there's at times a feeling that comes there of emptiness and, and longing where, where it's like, God, I don't understand how to feel this. But the Lord says, I'm the only one who can feel it. And the Lord says, I heard you when you cried to me. God says, I heard you.
when you cried to me silently, when you cried to me in your own time. God says, I heard you. And the Lord says, I've come for your words. God says, you're going to come through this trial by speaking your way out of it. God says, you're going to come through this season by speaking your way out of it. When you make the decree, things will move. God says, when you make the decree, you will begin to see it happen. But the Lord says, I'm healing you from disappointment right now. God says, I'm healing you from what didn't work, from what didn't happen, and where you were let down, and where you thought, God, I thought I could do it this way. But the Lord says, I'm going to give you better than what, what it is that you thought you could have and what it is that you lost. God says, be healed in your soul this day. God says, I'm going all the way back in your childhood to the age of eight years old. And the Lord says, I'm healing you from the rejection and I'm healing you from what violated you. God says, I'm going into your soul and I'm pulling out the root. Come on, Elder Velma, put your hand there on her stomach. The root of it is coming out now. Come out now. The rejection, I call it out. The rejection, the emptiness, the loneliness, the brokenness, I call it out. I call it out. I call it out. out. In the name of Jesus, be healed this day. Be set free this day. from the attacks against your mind from the battles against your soul oh the enemy targeted your soul the enemy sent arrows against your mind making you think you weren't weren't worth what God says you are but God says do you know how much I love you God says do you know how much I love you Do you know the great future I have in front of you? The great destiny that you have. But see, from your mother's womb, I called you as a prophetess, says the Lord. And the enemy has fought against it so hard. Because there are people that must break free by your words. Because there are people that are not in the kingdom now that must come in. And they're going to come in by your voice, says God. But there are those of other religions and those that serve other gods. And you are going to move in a powerful deliverance anointing. And they will be broken free, says the Spirit of the Lord. Now impart this in your life. Breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking. In the name of Jesus. Breaking is breaking. Breaking is breaking. Breaking is breaking. Come on, somebody begin to receive. Here it is. It's breaking is breaking. It's breaking is breaking. It's shut up. It's breaking is breaking. It's breaking, breaking, breaking. It's breaking is breaking. It's breaking, breaking off of you. Oh, Rabba Sanda Rabba Shaya. God says you begin to move and you begin to flow in an anointing of wealth. But God says, I'm gonna use you as one that can create an economy. And it will be through your product and through what you do. But there's more in you that hasn't even come forth yet, says the Lord. But the Lord says, say goodbye to your past and step into your future. Say goodbye to your past. God says, I'm severing a soul tie from your past. I'm severing it. I just saw it break right there. It just broke. Come on, it just broke in the name of Jesus. Receive that anointing. Receive that anointing in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give him praise. It's broken, it's broken, it's broken. Come on, somebody give him praise. It's broken, it's broken. No one had to lay hands on you for you to get your healing. You got your healing in the house. Can somebody get excited? Can somebody get excited? Can somebody get excited? Can somebody get excited? excited? I know we gotta go, but can you praise him for your family? It's broken.
in your hand very quickly. We're putting the giving information up on the screen. We're going to sow into the anointing that's here. There's a wave of healing that just begun. That has just begun at Kingdom Embassy. Throughout this week, many of you are going to experience waves of healing come over you. Throughout this week, and many of you are going to begin to experience unusual memories that are going to come back. When you experience it, you're going to know the Lord brought it up to heal it. As a matter of fact, we're decreeing I just got healed in the presence of God. From the trauma, from the pain of the past. Come on, do you receive that? If you need an envelope, just wave your hand. There are ushers. There are ushers that are coming to you if you need an envelope. Thank you, Jesus. Well, y'all messed me up today. I'm just still... about you but I can feel it it's breaking 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 what's breaking it's breaking it's breaking it's breaking the fear is breaking it's breaking it's breaking it's breaking the trauma is breaking it's breaking it's breaking in your hand. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. And for those that are giving online, I believe that this same healing anointing is coming to you. The same power of God is coming into your house right now. The same power of God is coming into your phone where you're watching from. It's coming through your screen where you're watching. And God says he's about to heal brokenness in your families. He's about to heal brokenness in your own soul. You're going to feel lighter. The burden has been lifted off of you. I decree that this is the word of the Lord for your life. And as we sow seed into this anointing, Father, we thank you that we're going to reap a great harvest in Jesus' name. I prophesy and decree the blessing of God. And we will be able to hold it in Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord praise in the room. Listen, if you have an envelope and you're in the middle section, pass it all the way down to the last person on your right. If you're in the outer sections, pass it into the aisle. The ushers are going to come row by row and collect your offering. Come on, Michelle, just dismiss us out of here. Listen, I don't want you to forget if you're volunteering for the Kingdom Government Summit. Are y'all excited about the summit? I am. If you're volunteering for it, there's a meeting on Monday at 6 p.m. That's tomorrow at 6 p.m. It's through Zoom. So make sure to call the office and get that information if you're volunteering. And hopefully you're coming, those of you that are coming to the summit, if you can't make it, you can attend online by going to my website, joshuagiles.com, and you can click on Kingdom Government Summit and make sure you register to attend online. This is going to be three powerful days. I don't know all of what the Lord's going to do, but I know he's going to move. We've been asking him for it, and there is a significant reason why we gather, why we're gathering in Washington, D.C., uh, which is going to be a gathering like no other one that we've done. We've got nutritionists coming to teach you. We've got, as some of you were in our canning class we did before, we've taken it to another level. We've got two different investment classes that we're doing. Where we're going to be doing live trading right there at the summit. I mean, it's going to be such a powerful experience, and I can't wait for what God is going to do. But please pray for us as we go. Uh, it's going to be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of uh, this week. Is this week, right? Oh my God, it's this week. I thought it was next week. It's this week. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, this week. When am I leaving? Okay, so uh, make sure that you get there. Make sure or that you uh, tune in online and even if you can, just pray for us because we're on an assignment. We going in and we getting out. Amen. Make sure you vote if you haven't voted and pray over your ballot as you vote. Amen. Believe God. I'm not telling you who to vote for, but uh, when you pray, I believe the Lord will lead you in that area and make sure you vote. And if you can vote early, do that. Amen. Come on, Michelle. She's going to dismiss us. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise for that word. Thank God because he is a healer. Come on. How
many of y'all know that healing is the children's bread? And we received our healing on today, amen? Tell somebody I'm healed. Tell somebody else I'm healed. Amen. Every head bow, every eye closed. Father, we thank you for showing up on today. We thank you that you are the Lord our God that healeth thee. We thank you that no weapon formed against us will be able to prosper. And Father God, we just take this word, we hide it in our hearts. That nothing will take it away from us. Lord, we thank you that we will not just be hearers of this word, but we will be doers of the word. We will be activated in every area of our lives. We thank you that we are a people of victory. We thank you for blessing KE. Bless those, the visitors, the members. Bless those online. Bless those that hear. We thank you and we bless you for the healing. And even those that will hear the rebroadcast, we send the word of healing to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for traveling mercies. Until we meet again in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hug someone.